Hey guys, welcome on this beautiful Thursday night. I hope you guys are having a great week and that you're enjoying the beginning of your summer. I know it feels weird having, no, you know, you haven't really had school inside class and now you're having summer, so it may have already felt kind of like a vacation for you guys. Uh, but I'm excited and ready to get to see you guys again. Um, just a couple of announcements before we get into our lesson. For starters, um, just a reminder, we will not have our actual meetups until June. Um, once June starts, we should get to meet up as a youth group again, um, but that will not take place until June. So for now, I'm going to continue doing these uh, online Bible studies for you guys so that you can be able to get a lesson in at least. Um, another announcement, guys, this next Sunday we are starting our spring revival. It'll go th from Sunday through Wednesday. And Monday through Wednesday, we will have a meal at 5.30 and have our services at 6.30. And so you guys are more than welcome to come to that and bring your family. Um, and it'll be a good time. Wednesday night in particular, we're doing a youth-led worship night. Um, and Sam and Noel are going to lead that worship. And so that's a night in particular that I invite you guys to come to. Um, third announcement, again, um, as a substitute for False Creek, since we aren't getting to have that this year, I am planning a, a week, you know, around a week's long activities so that we can have fun and kind of feel a little bit like False Creek. It's not going to be the same, but uh, at least we could have some fun. And so I'm planning that out. I will let you and your parents know about that here in about a week or so, um, exactly what we're going to do and, and all that. So look forward to that. But let's go ahead and jump into the lesson. If you remember last week and the past couple weeks, um, I've been talking about the hindrances to um, our sharing the gospel. What keeps us from sharing the gospel with others? What keeps us from evangelizing? And of course, we talked about the, the first one was complacency or apathy. And I called this the loss of love. And uh, really, it's, it's where we get so complacent in our walk with Jesus, um, we get so you know, comfortable... Um, that we forget about our role and eventually that can lead to complete apathy where we just don't care about seeing people saved and that's where it's a loss of love when you start to lose your love for Jesus and and you're not focused on serving him and obeying him um, you're not sitting in his word and letting it just you know that love of his just bask over you uh, you're going to lose sight of what's important and you're not going to be um, you know, as anxious about telling people. You're not going to be uh, anticipating seeing people come to Christ. You're going to just care about going through the routine. Um, and so, guys, we talked about that. You have to get into God's Word. You have to allow His love to saturate your life and let it compel you to be excited about telling people. You're going to get apathetic. You're not going to care about sharing the gospel. And second, guys, we talked about distractions or preoccupations. And I called this a lack of urgency. And I talked about how we get busy with a lot of things in life. And um, we let that overtake our mission of sharing the gospel with others, guys. And remember, that's our main calling as believers is to tell others about Jesus and his salvation um, that he's giving to us, guys. And so um, I think, guys, this, again, I said this is one of the biggest reasons why we don't share the gospel is we just get too busy. We get caught up in things that we think are important, but maybe they're not as important as sharing Jesus with others, right? And so, and I just talked about, you know, again, to solve that, we have to get to know Christ again and his deep, passionate love. And that creates a passionate love for others in us, and we gain an urgency, okay? And then I also said we need to make evangelism a priority in our life. Set it in your schedule. Say, I'm going to tell a person about Jesus today. Or this week okay and also guys constantly reminding yourself of those truths that I told you about that a life is fragile it could end at any time B um, Jesus could return at any point C every person is gonna either go to heaven or hell okay and D you're responsible for those you fail to to speak to share the gospel with guys and so make those reminders for you okay but today we're gonna get into the third reason why we often fail um, to share the gospel with people. And that is fear or anxiety or doubt, okay? 
And I call that a limit on our trust. Okay, limit on trust. Guys, we have really, it breaks down into three worries we have when it comes to telling people about Jesus. Um, for starters, what if people reject me? Okay, what if people reject me? We ask that question. What if people reject me? What if my friends shun me or my boyfriend or girlfriend dumps me? I know you guys think about that. You know, if I, if I become this devout believer, my friends aren't going to like me anymore. Or if I, if I, you know, follow Jesus and I tell my girlfriend about Jesus or my boyfriend about Jesus, they're not going to want to date me anymore. They're going to dump me. Um, well, first, guys, I'd say, you know, that person probably, you probably need to, didn't need to be with in the first place if they're willing to leave you for that, okay, guys? And those friends aren't really good friends if they're willing to leave you for that, okay? Um, but we often get that worry. What if I become unpopular for sharing my faith? Okay, and so I, this is really stems from a fear of rejection. We don't like to be rejected. We want to be included in things, guys. Think of clubs and stuff you join. You want to feel included. You want to feel like a part of something, whether it's a team in sports or whether it's an academic club or whether it's a band, okay, um, or whatever it may be, whether it's, you know, a, a clan, you play Call of Duty online. You want to feel included on that. And so we have this fear of rejection, and that often keeps us from sharing the gospel. Second, another worry we have is um, what if people start to treat me differently, okay? We start to think, what if they treat me differently? What if they begin to pick on me? Um, what if they try to hurt me, guys? Um, and then, So this goes further from the rejection. This is actually people attacking you because you're sharing Jesus with others. And so really, that's a fear of persecution. You're afraid people might treat you different, but not just treat you different like shun you, but actually uh, make fun of you or assault you because you're a Christian, guys. And so that's another thing. We have a fear of rejection and we have a fear of uh, persecution. And third, guys, we often ask this question as well. What if I mess up? Um, what if I say the wrong thing and a person doesn't come to Jesus? Okay. And guys, this really is a fear of failure or uh, doubting our abilities. Okay. So the first was fear of rejection. The second was fear of persecution. And the third is fear of failure. We're afraid sometimes of sharing Jesus because we don't think that we can tell a good enough story or we don't think we know enough about the Bible um, to tell people about Jesus or we feel like we're going to choke up and not have the exact right words to say and that that person's going to deny Jesus because of our, our failure, okay? And so those really are the three worries that kind of keep us from actually being bold enough to tell people about Jesus, guys. And so I want to tell you tonight about, uh, I use an acronym ART, A-R-T, okay, for overcoming fear and evangelism, okay? ART. I'm not sorry about my computer moving. Um, first, A, we need to accept the fact that you may face rejection and opposition as a believer in Christ, okay, guys? Remember that, accept the fact that you may face rejection and opposition for being a believer in Jesus Christ. Guys, that's the number one deterrent. We're so afraid that we're going to be treated differently. Well, Jesus says we will be treated differently for being believers. Okay, He said that the world would hate us because we are His, because they hate Him. Okay, Guys, you need to realize that the world isn't rejecting you. They're rejecting Jesus. It's not really you they're rejecting. They're rejecting Christ. Okay? And you must understand that the cost of being a follower of Jesus is that you could be persecuted, and you need to be ready to embrace troubles for sharing the gospel. Guys, we have to be ready um, to experience whatever comes our way in order to see people come to Jesus, guys. I mean, that's very important. If we can't do that, then we're not a true disciple of his. True disciples are willing to go anywhere to follow after Jesus, okay? And we all struggle with this. I struggle with this, guys. I'm afraid of what people may say. I'm afraid of what people may do um, if I were to share Jesus, guys. We all have those fears, but the first step of overcoming that fear is just realizing that it's going to happen and accepting the inevitability that you're going to get some 
backlash from some people for sharing Jesus with others. It happens. It's a fact of life because we live in a sinful world and people don't want to hear about Jesus. Okay? And so you're going to have it happen. You guys, you may lose friendships. You may become an outcast. You may get picked on, guys. But that is what happens as a believer, okay? We have to carry that cross and that burden. Yeah, I know it stinks. You know, you might say, well, that's that's awful. But that's part of our our walk is is willing to face persecution on behalf of Christ, guys. Face rejection on behalf of Jesus. And so and that and sometimes that's the only way you're going to be able to reach others. When they see people persecuting you, they come to the saving truth of the gospel. Okay? And so second so A is for accept. B, um, or R, is for rely. Okay, so accept, rely on Jesus for removing your fear. Guys, when you come to evangelism, you have to put your trust in Jesus to remove your fear. Guys, uh, Matthew 28, verse 20, when Jesus is giving the Great Commission at the very end, what does he say? He doesn't just leave him with the command and then just goes on his way. Jesus says, and lo, I am with you always even to the end of the age. He says, I am with you forever. I am always going to be with you. So why worry? Go do my command, uh, complete the task of reaching people for me, and just know when you're doing it that I am always with you. So we have that comfort knowing that Jesus is with us even when we're in the midst of persecution, even when we're in an unknown place, guys, with unknown people. Jesus is always going to be with us. And so that should give us comfort and help remove those fears. Also, guys, John 16, 33. This is what Jesus says also. These things I have spoken to you so that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. You're going to have troubles in the world. But take courage. I have overcome the world. Guys, we can go into the world not having fear because Jesus, who's our Lord, already overcame the world. He overcame everything in this world. And so you need to understand that he is ruler over it. He's in control, and you are one of his children. And so he's going to take care of you, okay? Um, Isaiah 41.10, this is back in the Old Testament. God said to uh, the Jews, Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be anxious, or do not anxiously look about you, for I am your God, and I will strengthen you. Surely I will help you. Surely I will up uphold you with my righteous right hand. So God gives us that confirmation, that promise that don't be fearful. Don't be anxious about anything because I am with you. I will hold you up with my right hand. I am God and I will take care of you. Okay. John 14, 27. Jesus says again, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your heart be troubled nor let it be fearful. Jesus gives us peace. As you rely on Jesus, he will shower you with peace. You will be able to overcome that fear the more you lean into him and lean on him. Okay, You have to start trusting in him. You have to start relying on him and his power to overcome any doubt and fear. He will remove it from you. He will give you peace. Okay? Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Paul says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So Paul is saying here, Don't be anxious about anything, but when you go through any aspect of life, you need to go to prayer and be thankful and, and ask of God. Ask of Him. And He will give to you. Okay, He will give you peace that surpasses what you can see, what you feel, what you experience in life. He will give you peace. And He will guard your heart and your mind in Jesus, guys. Okay? 2 Timothy 1.7 For God has not given us a spirit of timidity or, or fear, okay? but of power and love and of a sound mind. Guys, so God does not give us a spirit of fear. He gives us peace. He gives us power. He gives us love and a sound mind. Okay? So guys, as a believer, 
you don't have to worry about fear because that's not of God. Okay? God gives us peace. Okay? And Matthew 10, 28, Jesus says, Do not fear those who kill the body, but are un uh, unable to kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Guys, we shouldn't fear people when they persecute us. They may kill the body, but our soul lives on with Jesus. Who we should really fear and have reverence for is God because he can destroy both body and soul. He can send you to hell. He can send others to hell. Okay, And so that's a little more comfort too. It's a little harsh, but it's a reality that why fear man? Man is just like us. Who we should really fear and obey is God, okay? And not a fear like you hide in a corner from God, but like an understanding that he is powerful and mighty, okay? He's much bigger than you and me, okay? Um, knowing that God, guys, I want you to understand this, that knowing God goes before you into your battles, uh, that he goes before you into the experience of evangelism is encouraging. I mean, just think of a general, with his troops. Guys, if you had a general with his troops and he just kind of sat in his tent and all the troops went out dying and fighting, and that's, I know, how a lot of modern warfare, you know, modern warfare goes right now, okay? Um, a lot of times the, the general's inside planning and strategizing and the troops are out implementing what he strategized. But guys, back in the day, we're talking Civil War and, and you know, the Revolutionary War and the Civil War, your your generals and stuff were on the field of battle. And oftentimes, they went ahead of the troops and fought in battle. Okay? You know, they got shot up just like everybody else. They experienced wounds. They experienced uh, pain. Um, but they wanted their troops to have bravery. And so they would charge face long into battle with their troops with them. Guys, I want you to understand that's the way God is. He goes ahead of us into the battle and fights our battles for us so why have fear if god is already going before you okay and guys when we rely on him you need to we need to rely on him to remove our fears and embolden us to share the gospel with courage that's what it ultimately comes down to we have to start relying on god to remove our fears and embolden us he's the only one that can make you bold enough to share the gospel okay and finally the t Okay, so A is we need to accept the inevitability that we will face opposition, okay? R is we need to rely on Jesus. And the T is we need to trust in God's salvific power instead of our own abilities. Guys, this really deals with that third question of what if I mess up? What if I say the wrong thing, right? Guys, many of us, we look at our own abilities like, oh, if I'm not a good speaker like Brother Darren... You know, I can't reach people for Jesus. Guys, you don't understand that God's giving you your own gifts and talents. You may not be the person that's going to go preach in front of a church, but you may have the ability to talk to somebody one-on-one. -on -one. You may just be a good listener. You may, you may be able to understand people. Okay, maybe your experiences or whatever. Guys, God has given you specific talents and abilities that are yours and that are able to reach others, okay? You don't have to be this awesome speaker that goes in front of audiences to share the gospel with people around you, with your friends and family, okay? And so you need to realize that it's not about your own abilities, okay? You've got to realize, really, what it comes down to is that only God really saves people. You and I don't save people. You and I are only messengers for God. We're tools for God, okay? We, we tell people the good news. We share Jesus with others. But it's God that really does the work in people's lives, okay? And so God is the true actor in bringing someone to saving faith, okay? And so that really comes down to what does God do in the evangelism process, okay? What does he do in the evangelism process, um... And what do we do? What's our role? Okay. What's our role and what is God's role? Okay. And I think that's a good ending point right here to get into. I don't want to keep it real long tonight, but I want you guys, that's what we're going to talk about next week. I know we're having a revival next Wednesday, but I think I'll go ahead and post a video 
as well so you guys have that as well to let you guys know um, what is God's role in salvation. I think that'll help ease your worries about telling people about Jesus because you'll realize how little we really do compared to what God does, okay? We're just the messengers. It's really God that's the full actor in saving people, okay, guys? All right. Well, guys, I just pray for you this week. I invite you again to come to our revival. I look forward to seeing you guys. I hope you're having a great week, okay? I'm, we miss you guys. Rosa and I are so excited to see you again. Um, just stay safe, okay? Have fun. Get into your Bibles and seek after God, okay? And we'll continue to pray for you guys as we go throughout the week. Love you guys. Talk to you later.